morning. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, salam. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And thank you uh, to all of you for really uh, uh, sparing this sunshine uh, and the sunny day and to be here in this meeting on the Zoom again, which we've been spending the last couple of years, all of us, unfortunately, meeting on Zooms. Uh, we made a lot of friends, which is, uh, this is a plus. And a lot of uh, brothers and sisters across the country, uh, they were connected at a time that it was impossible. You need really years to meet all those individuals, amazing people across the country. Um, uh, just a a quickly, uh, MCF was established in 2007, uh, basically uh, uh, originally to bring together the what we call them the INGOs, the Muslim charities working out of the UK, delivering international aid and emergencies across the world, basically. Uh, but uh, just before COVID, we, we basically, a strategy change happened and the board uh, decided also to accommodate uh, what we call them the social action, Muslim-led uh, organizations uh, was in the UK. And uh, it was a, a, a work in progress until COVID hit. And then it was really uh, a, a, a job in action uh, by connecting organizations across the country who are delivering uh, amazing work at the grassroots level uh, for various communities. Uh, of course, charity is 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 a one of the pillars of Islam, which is a zakat. Uh, so it's not an optional voluntary contribution we have. In the top of the voluntary, we have a basically, as most of you are aware, uh, contribute uh, for those who uh, has the resources and the minimum wealth. Uh, it is a compulsory basically to give uh, to those uh, in need. Uh, the, Mo the UK Muslim community is known to be among the most generous in the, among the faith communities in charitable giving. Uh, the purpose of MCF really to uh, work together with uh, organizations and charities uh, to improve impact and effectiveness of their work and uh, have a better coordination of uh, the amazing work they're doing both here in the UK and internationally. Uh, during uh, the pandemic, we managed to develop what we call it a network of 300 uh, organizations and local groups who were delivering uh, work. And we still basically at the moment uh, trying to support strategically uh, behind the scene, uh, their progress and uh, development. Uh, during the pandemic, we, and this is something where our journey started, how we push into the secular space, if it's correct to call it, we became more involved in the National Emergency Trust Equity Group, the UK Community Foundation Equity Group also, and uh, uh, part of the charity inf infrastructure bodies where it, bring, it brings uh, various CEOs from across the country. Um, and uh, uh, also we became a regular uh, contributor to uh, the BAME steering group, which was meeting uh, the uh, Minister for Civil Society. Um, uh, today we'll be highlighting uh, three examples of, of how uh, faith-based work with, uh, sometimes we call it mainstream, and here in, in the settings of this uh, uh, talk is, is more of a secular setting. Um, so we have three examples. One is our partnership with the London Community Foundation. And uh, one, uh, uh, another example with the UK CF, the UK Community Foundation, and, uh, and then the partnership uh, with Comic Relief. Uh, I will pause here a few minutes to uh, just uh, highlight that um, uh, for us as faith communities, uh, we are actually uh, used to respond to emergencies, uh, to the needs of our communities and the needs of our neighbors and so on, uh, without really being asked to. And uh, usually from uh, our resources and our basically uh, community uh, contributions and so on, uh, which is amazing. But what the pandemic has actually highlighted for us, that it wasn't really a short term emergency, as we all know. Originally, we thought it's going to be three to six months. But actually, it dragged, and until now, we're still picking up the pieces, as you uh, all all uh, know. Um, and uh, to to really work with mainstream organization, we do have, and I believe during the program there will be other examples of uh, local uh, 
uh, authorities, local councils, and so on. Uh, there is spaces, but it's not as smooth as we basically think, because uh, really to be involved in, in with secular mainstream organizations, you really need to put the efforts and to come in a way out of the comfort zone um, and, and keep basically pushing. Um, so it's not really something is going to be, someone will come and knock the door, say, guys, why don't you get involved? And we have some resources. Um, and this may happen, uh, but this is, uh, 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 this is not really the, the usual case, is you really need to make sure you are visible, you are involved, uh, you have the data, and this is something important. Uh, you understand your community and the, the local uh, uh, community you're serving or communities, in, if, in many cases for some of us, uh, in order for you to speak, not on behalf of them, to speak with them if possible, or at least to communicate, be their voice with mainstream organizations. Um, so those three partnerships, they actually took from us some sort of uh, six to eight months development. So it's not really a, a, a short contribution you have to do and then things will happen. Uh, so what did we do? In the London Community Foundation, which, which was the first, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, serious partnership between us and a secular mainstream organization, uh, they basically were keen uh, to connect and understand more the needs of uh, local Muslim grassroots organizations and charities in, in London, because this is their mandate. And they did uh, had uh, some organization already uh, receiving support from them, but it wasn't really sufficient in, in terms of the numbers and the percentage of organization working in London. Um, uh, so they basically needed a partner. And at the same time, we, uh, during our COVID response, we re uh, highlighted that, uh, or we, we came across that only 16% of Muslim charities, uh, especially delivering uh, grassroots uh, support, only 16, one six, were able to access mainstream funding, which is, uh, is quite low. And so we basically noticed this ourselves during our research and connecting uh, uh, while we were connecting with organizations across the country. And in London was also a, a similar, similar percentage. So we actually knew that there is a gap here. And then we identify a partner like the Community Foundation who also they identify there is a gap and they need someone to bridge this gap. So in a way, we basically joined forces uh, with resources from them, first to uh, do mapping on organizations delivering uh, uh, work across London for grassroots communities, uh, their challenges, their needs, and, and, and how uh, and why they cannot access uh, funding. And then after the mapping, we basically uh, put together a, what we call it a, uh, uh, a, a round tables, webinars with the London Community Foundation, where we start bringing organizations from across London uh, uh, for those webinars to talk to them. So in a way, sometimes you need to take the hand of the communities or the organizations you're working with and basically help them to connect them basically. So in a way, we can be the connectors. And with our situation as MCF, since we are a network, this is what we, 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 we needed to do anyway. But for some of us uh, across uh, in this meeting and, and, and across the uh, uh, faith communities, they may need funding for themselves in a way to deliver uh, work. So the concept work both ways or the same way is you, we need really to reach out to understand what is available and if we are able to apply, uh, and especially a lot of the work uh, faith communities deliver, what we call it social action work, uh, is not really faith-based. Yes, it's a faith-based delivery, but it's not really delivered as a faith-based uh, uh, programs. Uh, then the next, next level with this program was, is we basically brought uh, what we call it the, the organizations uh, into our uh, settings and everything was uh, unfortunately was uh, uh, online to start giving them what we call it one-to-one -one support on their applications, understanding the needs of uh, the London Community Foundation and as well as uh, 
maybe some of you were involved. They were really a, a, a consortium of various funders in London. They came together uh, under the, basically uh, a, a one, one fund that all organizations in London can apply to. So we connected them first. We understood, oh, we understood what their needs. We connected them. And then we basically start helping them to understand how to apply and 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 uh, what are the needs and so on. So we did have like one-to-one -one support and group support on organizations, how to meet the criteria and develop their applications and so on. And at the same time, we were following with the London Community Foundation on any application that is actually require clarification, require support. So in a way that we step in to see if something missing, we would try to understand why the organization did not deliver or did not provide a, a policy that they already, we knew they have it and so on. Uh, with the UK Community Foundation, it was a very similar program, but was more national and uh, focusing on various areas like Birmingham, Coventry, Leicester, uh, and, and so on. So we basically work with their members across the country uh, and especially some community foundation, they were very keen to connect with BAME communities, with faith communities, and, and really understand them better and so on. And I, I wouldn't really be over saying it, but actually we were really somehow disappointed to discover actually many organizations are not known to those community foundations and the other way around. Many organizations, they are not aware of the existence of some of those community foundations in their areas and the, their funding criteria and the resources they have. Buddy, uh, you've got two minutes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and basically then, uh, uh, so we did uh, replicate the program which we had with the London Community Foundation, with the UK Community Foundation, with various foundations across the country. The last example, which is a straightforward one, based on what, we ha what we've done and the research and the data we managed to collate for nearly 18 months, we basically were considered by the Comic Relief to become a distribution partner for uh, BAME organizations and faith-based organizations across uh, England, basically. And uh, we were given something like two, over 200,000 uh, pounds to distribute with uh, specific criteria. And we received application for nearly just under 2 million for 200,000 pounds. So the need is there. Organizations who actually require support are uh, unfortunately uh, not aware of various funding uh, 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 possibilities, and they sometimes not ready uh, to tap into them. Um, so just a quick, quick, basically uh, learning from this. Uh, uh, on on the side of the secular organization, we discovered there is really uh, there is a recognition now, and of course we all came across the Kruger report in September 2020. Uh, there is now more uh, flexibility and accessibility from uh, uh, secular funding bodies and so on. There is more accommodation in the because equality and diversity now is a serious thing. Uh, so of which of course include faith. And there is also understanding of the complexities and uniqueness of faith-led organizations. Uh, from our side as faith communities, we basically, as it's, not, it's not really surprising that we are willing to, to, and, and to engage and, 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 and uh, work with any organizations that can support local communities. Uh, and we start uh, to really understand better the criteria and we need to work more on this and the motivation of some of the uh, secular funders. And I will finish my final thought is, um, which basically I used it as my, my, my motto throughout the, the, the pandemic, is always bridges, they actually must, and they, the strongest when they are built from two sides. So sometimes we complain that mainstream secular organizations, they're not really reaching out to us, but some, we need to actually also understand are we really reaching out to them? Because we need to meet somewhere, somewhere halfway and build the bridge from both sides. Adi, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. It's a pleasure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I wish you all the best for the programme. Mm -hmm.